so a warm welcome uh, once again jaisi to this uh, you know live session uh, thank you so much for joining us and you know being on this platform with you is really really a big opportunity for me and i'm really thankful for that oh thank you so much for having me it's such a pleasure to be here okay so a quick i'll just give a quick introduction uh to your readers uh jessie mm -hmm. q sutanto is a leading southeast asian uh writer on the blog these days uh she has you know published books uh the the obsession dialay for aunties and she is already become a big name in the you know writers industry at the moment and uh, i happened to read one of her books recently and it was amazing i mean i was thrilled normally i'm not someone you know who reads who reads comedy literary fiction yes i am into uh, chick lit and i love reading women's fiction but this this was the first time that i read something on a more you know humorous side and jessie i must say you have done an incredible job with this book i i got this you know i received an arc from uh, harper collins uk and uh, oh, you know i read the I read the title, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Dialy for mm -hmm. aunties." Uh, even when I read the blurb, the blurb itself mm -hmm. was so you know uh, interesting that I couldn't just put it down. I knew that I had to read this book. <laughs> oh, so I just you, so you know uh, so kind. Uh, allow me to ask you know some questions that I've been wanting to ask for a long time mm -hmm. ever since I've yeah. read this book. So I'll just yeah. you know we'll just start with a quick introduction. Just tell me about yourself. I read that you grew up, grew up in Jakarta and then you know mm -hmm. Singapore and then you mm -hmm. went to Oxford for you know creative mm -hmm. writing and then how was this mm -hmm. entire journey for you? Ah, uh, so I I feel very grateful that I was able to have the upbringing um, that I did have. Um, I feel like. my parents uh sacrificed a lot to you know be able to send us to singapore because they wanted okay. us to be able to like speak good english um okay. but um but yeah i mean you know we ended up kind of growing up uh so far away from them um and then in in oxford uh was where i actually met my husband and okay uh, honestly like without him um dal a for aunties would not have been written because he was the one who was like you know your your family is just so like over the top and so and so crazy <laughs> you know like you have to write about them and and when he said that i was like what they're just so normal and and so boring you know and he was like no 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 there's nothing like normal or boring about that <laughs> <laughs> so is your family really like the one that you uh, you know mentioned in dialy for aunties do you have such an extended family do you have such meddling mm -hmm. aunties in your own life yeah and not just aunties but you know i would say like my dad actually meddles more um than my mom like so actually the mom character is actually based on my dad <laughs> Oh, okay. Um, and, yeah. And my and our family is very similar like after my husband read it, it he was like, "Oh my god, I can totally see your family doing this. If if you were to accidentally kill me, they would, you know, 100% help you um hide, you know, my body." <laughs> so you know, I you know, I sort of feel that maybe uh I don't know if that's true or not, but I just felt that maybe mm -hmm. uh, Dale for Aunt is, you know, somewhat inspired by your own life. You know, like you said, mm -hmm. you met your husband at Oxford. So is um, mm -hmm. the character Nathan inspired by him in some way? Uh, I didn't consciously um, write Nathan to be like my husband, but of course, my husband is like, oh yes, I am totally the inspiration for Nathan. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> that's amazing. I mean, that's amazing. So Jesse just uh, I I'd like to know what really, you know, inspired you to write in the first place. How did you realize that you wanted to be a writer? 
Um, I think I've always loved uh, writing. I remember when I was a teen in in high school, um, they were like, oh, we're, you're, we're kind of forming like this creative writing club who wants to join. And I immediately was like, oh my gosh, like me, I want to join. Um, so I think it was like a very natural, um, you know, I was a big reader and then I, I just really liked doing it. So I can't, I can't even pinpoint a, a, a time when I thought, you know, oh, I, I'm going to be a writer because I, I feel like I always had that in mind. Okay. Okay. So, um, how did you, like, how did you, you know, decide that, you, you know, there must be some moment, uh, a euphoric mm -hmm. moment. And when you decided that now is the time that I should, you know, write it seriously and, you know, take it to the publishing. How did that just oh, came into okay. your mind? Yeah. So you know, the moment of realization I, um, we are talking about. Yeah. Uh, I guess, um, after I graduated from, um, college and, you know, I did my undergrad degree and then I, I kind of had like, you know, this moment of crisis, um, that I now realize yeah. a lot of like college graduates have because, okay. you know, we come out of like college and we're like, oh my God, what are we going to do with our lives? You know? And so okay. I was like, oh, okay, I know I'll, I'll just, um, apply to grad schools, <laughs> kind of, you know, <laughs> postpone the uh the inevitable um you know real world and, and so i thought mm. okay well i'll just um try going for like a master's in creative writing and so then that was when i okay went to oxford um and right after that i i started you know um submitting my work mm. to like agents um to okay. try and really get published okay so were you only trying to get in touch with agents based in the US or in the UK? Yeah, uh, US and UK, because um, when I was in Oxford, uh, they were telling us, okay. you know, the realities of publishing is that like, it's very US okay. and UK centric. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. So how did you actually land your first book deal? Uh, how was that moment for you? And what did you do when you find out, mm -hmm. you know, when you found out that Yes, this this uh, mm -hmm. certain publishing house wants to you know acquire rights for your book. And how did yeah. you just take that moment? Oh my gosh, it took so long. It literally took like nine. I want to say like nine years. Did you face years. Did you face rejections mm -hmm. in the beginning? Yeah, so many. Um, so I had actually okay. written eight eight books by then, and oh um, my god, yeah, and. What's funny is that my first book deal uh, was actually for my fifth book, but like my sixth okay. and seventh book, uh, they have been so, like submitted uh, to publishers. So had you been agent. trying? Okay, okay. So had you been mm -hmm. trying to you know get into publishing ever since you'd written your first book? Like you said, you got published when yes. you were writing your eighth book. So you tried for all the yes. books. You know, you were just trying. You never, mm -hmm. you know, you know, you were someone. Yeah that who never gave up, you, you kept trying. I mean, yeah. that's, that's incredible. Yeah. So, so actually my um, sixth and seventh books had been submitted to publishers and were rejected when like, we had even forgotten about like the fifth book, um, which was uh, my young adult suspense, the obsession. Um, when the right. offer came in and I was like, Oh my gosh, you know, um, <laughs> I just like, <laughs> started sobbing and I, I just couldn't believe it um, because it had been so long and I had kind of gotten used to like, oh, you know, this book will probably also die, uh, you know, yeah, during submissions yeah. to um, publishers. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, that, that happened, was a massive surprise. <laughs> mm -hmm. So how did you celebrate? Did you celebrate with your family? Uh, how did your family react? How did your, mm -hmm. you know, husband or family reacted? It must be a big, big moment oh, they were, for you in your life. I mean, getting yeah, published. They were so like, they were just, they so must shocked. be ecstatic. Um, yes. I mean, my mom was like, so proud. Um, but my dad was like, he was proud, but then he was like, well, how much are you getting for it? And to be honest, um, the obsession was like quite a small deal 
So then when I told him the amount, he was like, oh my God, that's so little. Like, you know, I can't believe you struggled for so long, you know, to only get yes. like this little uh, money. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's such an Asian parent, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's amazing. I, I, you know, I can t- completely relate with the feeling, uh, this feeling of yours, because I've also been through the similar process. And I, I know how mm-hmm. a writer feels when you get, you know, mm-hmm. accepted by someone after facing so many rejections and disappointments. Yes. So I'm really, really happy for you for because you mm-hmm. are in a very, very good place. Uh, and that's a very nice thing. So Dile mm-hmm. for aunties, let's talk about Dile for aunties. You know, mm-hmm. Dile for Aunties is a roaring success. Uh, while I was, you know, researching for this work, I came to know that it was nominated in the Goodreads Choice Awards and it yeah. came in second. Did, mm-hmm. did you expect that was coming? And how did you deal with its astounding popularity? Oh, my God. I was so shocked. I was shocked because, um, yeah, we ended up with like over 40,000 votes. And I was like, what? Like, I didn't even know that 40,000 people have, like, read it. Um, and yes. it, it was unreal because, so when the, when the Good, Goodreads Choice um, Awards uh, first started, and then I was, like, one of the first ones, um, you know, during the first round, um, I saw that, like, it had been nominated. I was like, oh, okay, I'm just going to forget about it because, it's never gonna happen. I'm not gonna get to the next round and I don't wanna be like disappointed. So I actually did forget about it um, just because I thought it was such a long shot. And then, you know, it kept going through the next rounds and I was like, what? (laughs) That's that's amazing. So humbling. I mean, yes, it's amazing. You know, getting nominated itself is a big, big thing. Yeah. I can say, you know, you must have been, you know, felt really proud of yourself. I mean, that's amazing. Yeah. So who yeah. is, uh, okay, Jesse, who is your favorite uh, character from Dial A for Aunties? Tell us a bit about the characters and, you know, uh, mm-hmm. were they, like you said, some of them were inspired by, you know, people in your own life. So who mm-hmm. is your most favorite character from the book? Uh, so my most favorite character is Big Ant because um she is like she was really know, she by the way she was really a, fun yeah. to read i love oh. uh, <laughs> you know her character so much she was i mean she's kept always kept always uh, you know everyone on their toes and that was amazing yes. <laughs> <laughs> so big ant is very much uh based on uh one of my relatives i won't say who um but okay. you know, this relative of mine is the person that we all go to um, when we're in trouble and we need, you know, help. And um, okay, okay, you know, we just trust this person so much. Uh, and I just feel like oh so my she God, comes for the like rescue for everyone in the family. Yes, yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, oh my <laughs> gosh, you know, I, I wish that I'm like her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you will be at some, you know, when you <laughs> become a big aunt for yourself. <laughs> so how, Jesse, how, how was the experience of writing a book with so many multi-layered characters? You know, how did you, mm-hmm. I mean, if I talk about myself, you know, when there are so many characters in the book and it mm-hmm. becomes difficult, you know, to be in the heads yeah. of everyone and, you know, come up with so much thought process. How did you deal with that? Was, what, what was your writing mm-hmm. process? I'd like to know especially about this book, because there were so many Mm -hmm. characters. Mm, Yeah, so Dal A for Aunties um, was my ninth book, I think. Um, And so by then I have, I've just had so much practice um, (laughs) writing, right? And I remember when, um, I remember like in my, when I was writing my third book, I had a really hard time with like all the side characters and my critique partners, they would tell me like, oh, um, you know, the main character is great, but like the side characters are very one dimensional. They're very flat. Um, You know, they're just not fleshed out at all. And so I remember having to kind of like learn to um, like give more attention to my side characters. And by the time, um, you know, I, I got to dial A for aunties, I feel like 
I've had so much practice doing that that it felt very natural um, by then. But you know, it took me so many okay. books to to like get there. <laughs> you know, I you know when when I was reading about those characters, you know, there mm -hmm. was some point where I was really confused. How did you mm -hmm. just you know switch from one characters to the other? I mean, for a reader, mm -hmm. of course, it was amazing. I had an amazing experience, and the <laughs> book you. throughout was very humorous. The way you mm -hmm. you know you know added tinges of humor in the book. I mean, that was amazing. Even to write a comedy book it itself is a big thing. So mm -hmm. as an as a writer, I was just trying to understand the process, how you dealt with so many things at one time, and you mm -hmm. know while we are talking about the writing process. Mm -hmm. I was going through your social media posts and I came across mm -hmm. and I learned a lot about your writing process. Like you had mentioned, mm -hmm. there was a point when you started writing 500, per, 500 words per day and then how you mm -hmm. jumped to 2000 words per day. So mm -hmm. tell us a bit about your writing process. How do you manage, you know, to keep your schedule so organized? How do you manage mm -hmm. to, you know, uh, you know, have a family around, you know, do your house chores. And at the same mm -hmm. time, you know, you're focusing so much on your books. How do you manage the schedule? How to maintain so, consistency when you're writing? Yeah. Yeah. So I found that especially before I got published, um, very few people took my writing time seriously um, because they okay. just saw it as like a hobby. Um, my, okay. my husband took it very seriously and he like really respected my writing time but like I would be writing and then um like my parents would call you know with whatever crisis because there, there's always a crisis and then they would be like come you need to come and like handle this and blah blah, blah. and I'm like All right. I can't I'm writing and they're like no just come you know like they they completely um just you know wanted me to push it aside for whatever and so I was okay. getting very frustrated because I was getting constant interruptions. And um, okay. then I realized like the only time that I wasn't getting interrupted is very early in the morning um, before everyone else is awake. So then I started okay. waking up super early and um, okay, everyone else is still asleep. I, I will just like learn to very quickly, you know, get to my computer and just start writing right away because um, I didn't want okay. to lose any of that time. And I think at the okay. time I started, um, when I started writing in the morning, I was like aiming for 1000 words or maybe 1,500. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then knowing that I have only such a limited time before everybody else woke up and start like calling me and whatever, um forced okay. me to learn to write faster um and then okay. by the end of it i was like writing 2000 words so um wow. you know even until now i'm i i just have like an hour and a half in the morning where i quickly write okay. 2000 words and then once that's wow. done um that is it like i don't work on my writing at all um for the rest of the all day right. i i'm just all like right. you know with the kids or you know, cooking or whatever uh, is needed. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you pretty much, you know, you know, dedicate a, a time to your writing. Of course, without dedication mm -hmm. and without consistency, writers can't really, you know, yeah. complete their goal. I mean, if you decide to mm -hmm. write a book in two months and it's necessary yeah. that you write thousand to two thousand words yeah. every day, it's important. Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, oh, and I, I only do it every weekday. Um, so I take weekends off. And so I, I don't feel like burnt out or anything, you know, like I feel like okay, so you, it's you like, take a, weekends it's like a real job. That's amazing. So you write yeah. five days a week. Okay. Yeah, I write five days a week. And then I'm like, so, okay, Jay, I have a break. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so you, do you think do you think writers can really uh, take this profession as a full time job? Do you think they can, this is something that they can really look forward to and make a profession out of it? Um, sorry, uh, wait, sorry, I feel my house shaking. Hang on. Um, I, I always I look at safe. my, um, I know, I always look at like the, the, the fan, the ceiling fan, like to, to make okay. sure, you know, is, it's not like an earthquake. Okay at your end? 
it's okay. I think it's like waving just a little bit. Okay, that's. I think okay. it's fine. So, <laughs> oh my god, I the, was just the perils scared, of you know? um, living in <laughs> Indonesia. <laughs> Oh my god, my heart beat just stopped for a minute and I was, you know, uh, praying no, no, it's fine. internally that you're fine. Thank God you're fine. Just be safe. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, sorry, okay, what, was, great. what was the last question? I forgot. You, I was just... <laughs> it's all right, such things happen. As long as you're safe, that's completely mm-hmm. fine. <laughs> so I was asking, uh, do you think writing is something that writers can seriously take as a profession? Can they make a profession out of it? And at the same time, you know, mm-hmm. make money? What What would you mm-hmm. like to say about that? Um, honestly, it's really difficult. Uh, so when, um, like, so my first book deal was The Obsession. Um, okay. And, you know, honestly, like, the advance is so small that I don't see how anyone could like live off, yep. you know, yep. that. Yep. And Absolutely. I when agree. I looked it up, um, it's like a pretty, like an average advance. And then, um, hmm. then my second book deal was um, for my middle grade fantasy, um, Theo Tan and the Fox Spirit. And okay. that's like okay. bigger um, in terms of, okay of the advance but still i was kind of like i don't know how anyone can make a living doing this because yes um the payments are broken up into like three or four um installments Installments. and um yeah and like the last one won't even be um paid until uh, a year after publication so you know like taking into account like uh the average advance is let's say like ten thousand us dollars so then it's like okay. broken up over a period of basically like two to three years so okay. um so it's very difficult like even if you got like you know a huge like a hundred thousand dollar uh advance it's still gonna be like broken up over three years um okay so i honestly it is really hard um and so i'm very grateful that um i have like support from uh, my husband. Mm. Uh, mm, that's, so that's amazing. One way of making a career in it, which I am doing now, is um, by writing, you know, really fast and like writing multiple okay. books. So, like okay. this year, I have four books coming out, and wow. I feel like at, yeah. So then, at this speed, then I'm like, okay, then you know, then you can make a living out of it yes but exactly because exactly you're just like you know pounding out book after book um exactly so. if you're bringing book after book and then you can you know rely on it and make it mm-hmm. a full-time job and then you can think yeah. of making a career out of writing yes um you know unless of course you're one of like the lucky few where your books are like selling like hot cakes um yes you know but i'm sure so... your books are already selling like hot cakes i mean daily uh, uh, Daily for aunties has already become, you know, a roaring success and everybody's talking <laughs> about it. So I know you've paid a long way for yourself and that's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel very, very blessed and, you know, how Daily for aunties has gone. Yes, you should be, Jesse. you should mm-hmm. be. So coming back to Daily for aunties, uh, let's talk about the Netflix movie. I mean, I'm so excited. I, I just read that. Dialy for aunties is being adapted into a Netflix movie. I mean, that Mm -hmm. itself is a major thing. So tell us how it happened and what's the process like? How did the Netflix guys grow to you? And are you involved Mm -hmm. in the screenplay? And when when is it Mm -hmm. coming out? I just want to know. I can't wait to see it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I know, I can't wait either. Um, So actually, when we sent the manuscript to publishers, somehow it got leaked to... um, Hollywood, I guess. And so we we started getting calls from um, film agents um, wanting to represent it. And so uh, we picked one film agent and um, then the film agent uh, sent it off to um, producers. And then um, very quickly, like we had a lot of offers from um, production companies. Um, That's true. Yeah, and then uh, then those production companies went and got um, offers from studios. Um, 
Okay. And it was narrowed down to like four studios. Um, and okay. then we went with um, Netflix. So that was okay. like an incredible, you know, uh, I'm time. sure it was. Yes. <laughs> it was like so unreal. Um, yes. So I, I'm not sure when it will come out. Um, so the last I heard is that like, uh, so we have a screenwriter. She she worked okay. on Fresh Off the Boat and um, How I All Met right. Your Mother. So she's you know very funny. Oh, and uh, amazing! She's finished the yeah. She's finished the script, and um, okay. and, and then I heard that Netflix wanted a few edits to it, and so we should be okay. getting it um, soon, hopefully. <laughs> Wow, wow. I can't really wait. Yeah. I can't wait. Yeah. So how does, so does, uh, when you know when a book is being adapted into a movie, so mm -hmm. does the production house ask the writer to, you know, help with the screenplay or with the screenwriting? Did mm -hmm. you, did they ask you, uh, you know, did they seek for mm -hmm. your involvement or did you just yeah. give up the rights to the screenwriter? How did that happen? And are you involved in the production at, you know, at some point mm -hmm. or any way? Or do you mm -hmm. think writers are also, you know, allowed to, you know, give their opinions about it? Or mm -hmm. do you, uh, you know, you are, are you giving some sort of help to the production house or not? Mm -hmm. How how involved um, are you in this entire process? Yeah. I just like to know that. So it was actually a lot more um, flexible than, than I expected. Okay. Um, so okay. before my film agent even uh, sent it to producers, um, okay. She asked me, like, do you want to be attached as the screenwriter? And I was okay. like, no, because I know nothing about, you know, writing a script. Okay. And I didn't want okay. to, like, ruin it. <laughs> so she okay. was like, okay. Because <laughs> um, she said that they're very open to it. And, like, uh, a lot of authors do have experience writing a screenplay. Right. And so then they would want to be attached. And that's totally fine. So I was like, no, I don't want to. Okay. So, um, but the screenwriter that they did go with, um, okay, you know, she was really great in that she uh, kept up a lot mm. of communication with me, and she would, she would oh. ask me things like, oh, um, like for example, if uh, someone were to stub their toe, like what would they say okay. in Indonesian? Um, you All know, right. what would they All say right. in Chinese? Like. Um, so she, right. she really, uh, made a point. So she was of, supportive and she was, yeah. you know, cooperative in this case. Mm -hmm. You guys yeah. were, you know, having an open communication. I mean, that's amazing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel very grateful, um, for that. Yes, you must. I'm, I'm, I really can't wait to see the Netflix movie. I mean, now that I've read the I book, know, I can't too. wait to see how the, you know, the production house, mm -hmm. how the screenwriter, you know, have, have just, I have know. done justice to the book. So yeah, <laughs> let's see how it goes. <laughs> yes. So, so Jesse, I wanted to ask that there's a misconception. Most readers think that writers have some some sort of involvement with the cast of the book, uh, of the movie mm -hmm. that's you know of the book that's being adapted into a movie. So, would they you know ask for you mm -hmm. or you know take your uh, opinion on it mm -hmm. regarding the mm -hmm. casting? Or is it entirely, mm -hmm. you know, on the production company? Mm -hmm. um, what I keep hearing from more experienced friends is that they will mm -hmm. ask you and then they'll just really? be like, wow. oh, oh, yes, oh, yes. And then they'll do whatever they want. So, <laughs> so I, I just, I don't think <laughs> But, expect, they, but they're uh, going to definitely anyway. ask you about it, right? Yeah, they'll, they'll ask. And then, um, but, you know, whether or not they will actually like, agree is um okay not so have you guaranteed. envisioned any any particular celebrity in the roles of you know yeah uh, medi and Ch and nathan uh, you so have surprisingly any like i i am more excited about the casting for the ants um oh. <laughs> yeah i mean like i would kill to have someone like um uh sandra O oh or um, oh wow! Yes. You know Margaret Cho. Um, I, I mean, yeah. there are just so many like hilarious, you know, Asian women in Hollywood. Yes. I feel yes. indeed. Um, indeed. So I'm very, indeed. very excited indeed. for the aunties. 
<laughs> I hope everything goes well, and you know the casting turns out to be amazing. The way, just the way that you had, you know, expected for it. So let's mm-hmm. let's just keep our fingers crossed, and let's hope for yes. the best. So Jesse, I'd like to ask you about your upcoming projects. What are you working mm-hmm. on at the moment, and what uh, what should your readers expect from you in the coming days? Mm-hmm. Tell us about so, your upcoming projects. Hey, uh, so I, I just finished writing um, Auntie's three, and uh, okay. I, I will be editing. Are you that working soon. on a sequel of Daily for Auntie? Yeah, so that was um, what I just finished was um, the number three, um, Auntie's number okay. three. Uh, uh, but wow. this year, this year I, I have four books coming out, and one of them is the sequel to Daily for Auntie's. It's called Four Aunties okay. and a Wedding. And, um, and a wedding. Okay. Yes, <laughs> and it's you know <laughs> about uh, Medi and Nathan's uh, wedding, and it's okay. set in Oxford, England. So, uh, okay. and there will be like wow. a lot of shenanigans, <laughs> of course. Yes, a lot of lots of drama, lots of chaos. Yes, lots and of, lots of meddling from the aunties. Yes. Yes. Definitely. Um. And then okay. the other three books I have coming out this year is, is uh, one is like my middle grade fantasy, um, Theotan and the okay. Fox Spirit. And that's um, like okay. more uh, like an adventure magic story. Okay. And um, then All the right. other two are young adult. Um, one of them is a young adult uh, suspense called The New okay. Girl. And then the other one I'm really okay. excited about is called, um, well, that was unexpected. And the reason why I'm so excited about it is because it's the first book I have coming out, which is going to be set in okay. Indonesia. So um, I'm like, yeah. Okay. Which one is that? Yeah, I can't which wait. one is that? <laughs> I, it's called, well, that was unexpected. Oh, well, that was unexpected. So, when the title itself seems yes. very interesting. Yes. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's so great. So you know, I, I'm really because, looking forward um, to read your The Obsession. I really want to read The Obsession. I'll see ah. if I can get hands on a copy from, you know, Pakistan. Oh my gosh, I hope you like it. <laughs> yes, because I'm really into young adult thriller and suspense, oh, okay. and, you know, some sort mm-hmm. of books. That's one of the genres mm-hmm. that I really look forward to. So I really want to mm-hmm. read The Obsession and then I'm waiting for mm-hmm. The New Girl as well. Ah, okay. I'm so nervous now. <laughs> I'd like to know, is there any book that completely changed your life? Hmm. Um, I would say Gone Girl. Uh, I, I really? still remember, you know, like reading it for the first time. And okay. I was just like, um, wow, I have never read anything like it before um you okay. know where i was so completely fooled and um there were just so many twists and i loved how exactly. they had um you know unlikable uh main characters yep. um yeah it was just amazing um and it, it just like turned every like expectation on its head um okay and i would say uh actually another book um would be Game of Thrones because again, okay. like I felt like he kind of mm-hmm. just took all the tropes that we were so used to, like um, yep. you know the prince uh, saving the day or uh, the princess, yes. um, you know, getting a happy ending, um, and he yes. just kind of like destroyed all of it. And I was like, oh my god, <laughs> my mind is blown. And um, ever since I read those books, I I've been trying to do the same with like more you know unexpected turns um and things okay. like that okay mm-hmm. so game of thrones was really a game changer no wonder right yeah <laughs> that's amazing that's amazing so jesse is do if someone comes to you you know an aspiring writer comes to you so what tips would you like to offer to them what would you like to say to them mm-hmm. um i would say uh that they should learn uh, to write even when they're not inspired um, and kind of just try to really make writing a habit because um, Mm. 
I used to think that like, oh, I should just write um, when I know what to write. But then, then okay. I ended up like with, you know, weeks and weeks of not writing. Um, hmm. And, and so now I realize like, oh, I have to make it happen. Um, okay. You know, there's no like magical muse that's going to show up and be like, oh, this is what you should write. Um, okay. so unless I put the work in every day, it's just not going to get written. Yes, that's true. That's true. It's never gone unwritten. You have to, you know, sit, mm -hmm. give it time and then work on the project that you're working. So have mm -hmm. you ever, you know, faced writer's block in your life now that you've written around eight, nine books and there are many mm -hmm. more to come. So how do you deal mm -hmm. with writer's block? This is something that I'd like to know from you personally, because I have been, mm -hmm. you know, facing lots of lots of writer's block in the last few years. How mm -hmm. would you, you know, how would you help yeah. me get out, out of it? And even the writers, mm -hmm. aspiring writers would like to know mm -hmm. about that. Um, so I feel like writer's block um, can have like two different, there are two different reasons why someone might have um, writer's block. And one is, um, you know, emotional uh, well-being. Like, so I, I have friends okay. who get blocked because um, they're so worried about, uh you know, maybe their first book didn't do well. And so then that mm. there's so much pressure on them for the second book um, mm. that they get very stressed and anxious, uh, which is very understandable. Um, yes. So then, you know, if, if the root is like the emotional um, thing, then um, I think that the writer should take time away from writing and kind of recover and, you know, just be really kind to themselves. Um, Okay. And just kind of enjoy life uh, for a while. Okay. Um, okay. And then, then the second reason is um, the creativity, um, like the more technical uh, part, which might lead to a writer's block. And for that, um, mm -hmm. I would suggest um, writing an outline. So I used to be a pantser, which means that I didn't have an outline or anything. I didn't know what I was writing before I sat down, you know, and okay. start, started writing. Okay. I didn't know like where the story was going to go. And um, I would get okay. blocked a lot because I would be like, you know, I would be like 10,000 words into the story and I'm like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen next? I don't know. And then, and then I would just freeze and not write yeah. for like <laughs> weeks and weeks, you know, because I just didn't know what was going to happen. Um, yep. Yep. So what really helped with that okay. uh, was writing, like just um, at, like plotting, you know, um, the next few chapters or as far as you can go, um, mm. then, okay. you know, at least you have kind of like a vague idea of um, where mm. to go, then writing became so much easier for me. Um, yes. And yes. yeah, so that was, that was what got me out of my writer's block. Okay. I mean, I, you know, I even I agree with that part which, when you said that mm -hmm. when you write an outline, it sort of gives you an idea like where are you going to mm -hmm. take the story and how are you going to yes. take it and what are your characters going to do in the next scene? It really helps. Yeah. Outlining a, yeah. every chapter really helps. I tried doing mm -hmm. the same, uh, you know, I used the same writing technique for my previous books mm -hmm. and I know how they helped me out. So when, yes. when you, without an outline, you're just sitting right in your, in front of your laptop and you really know, mm -hmm. don't know what are you really going to write about. So outline yeah. is a very good idea and, and all the aspiring mm -hmm. writers should definitely take a note from that. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, yeah. most of the times a lot of aspiring writers even come to me and they, you know, you know, they're completely lost. They have no idea how they can take a, their story forward because they're just stuck somewhere mm. and they have yeah, lots of exactly. thoughts in their heads and they can't just shape up their ideas and, you know, give it to something. Yes. And outlining yes. is indeed a very good technique. Yeah. Okay. So Jesse, uh, I'd like to talk a bit about, you know, the publishing process, especially uh, mm -hmm. for aspiring writers. What tips mm -hmm. would you like to give to the aspiring writers? How would they go about, you know, publishing their books in the current times? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so first of all, I, when I first started writing, I had kind of grown okay. up with, you know, the older generation of writers like Stephen King. Like I had 
grown up reading their interviews and stuff. And so I thought, okay, okay. So writing is going to be like this really lonely process where you're just okay. kind of doing it all on your own. And, yes. you know, you don't really have any like friends or community and whatever. Mm. So okay, I'm so happy and so grateful that it turns out I was very wrong and that there is a huge writing community out there. Um, so first okay. of all, most importantly is like find your writing friends because they are the only people who would really understand, you know, how hard it is to go through the publishing process because you're going to yes. um, be rejected like hundreds of times. And, yes. you know, there's just a million things will go wrong. And um, yes. no one else in your life is going to get it. Um, hmm. so you need your writing, uh, family basically, uh, you hmm. know, without my writing friends, um, I just wouldn't be here. Um, okay. and then the second thing is, um, research, um, agents, uh, because basically okay. I, I think like to be published, you know, by like, uh, a traditional publishing house yes. in the US. Yes. And the you UK, need to you, find you literary agents agent. if you want to go yeah. through traditional publishing. Without literary yeah. agents, you just can't get into traditional publishing. Yeah. Um, okay. Although I, I do, I think like um, sometimes uh, those big publishing houses do have um, events where they let you uh, submit mm -hmm. to them without an agent, but I think you still okay. need an agent um, because the okay. agents are the ones who really know like the contracts okay. and stuff like that. Okay. Um, okay. I also made the mistake of um, really like putting my agents on a pedestal and, you okay. know, which left me open to um, not being treated well by uh, my old agents. And okay. so I would really encourage um, writers to um, respect themselves and you know just kind of trust their gut um like okay. if they feel that their agent okay. is um not treating their time well then you know don't stay with them okay. uh, i know i know like readers okay. always feel like oh my god you know i have to like yes uh make my yes. agent you know, getting it whatever but getting an agent to... itself is a big thing for yeah. the writer yes you know? yeah and sometimes it happens that the literary agents they treat they take the new uh, you know newbie newbie writers for granted mm -hmm. that's what you're saying that yes. writers should know what they really want for themselves yeah yeah um and just kind of see okay. your agent as your partner so they're like on the same level as okay. you um and you know okay. not someone you kind of like need to you know like revere <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah so for every writer it's important that they you know carry a bit of research on their own you know before mm. stepping into the uh, publishing uh, you know in the process yeah. they must know how this entire process works it's really important for them to know about it you know without yeah. just getting in, into it blindly they need to be aware of yes. all the things exactly yeah that's very important okay jesse mm -hmm. now i'm just coming to the end of our session. Uh, is there anything mm -hmm. that you'd like to say to your fans, to your readers, especially in Pakistan and Indonesia mm -hmm. and all over the world? Any message for them? Um, I'm so grateful to everyone who has um, read my books. Uh, so one of yes. like the best parts of publishing is that I've gotten so many messages from readers all over the world. Um, and okay. I've noticed that like, especially from like uh, Asia or Middle East or Africa, yes. just people of color keep on like messaging yes. me and being like, oh my God, this is exactly my family. Like I've, I've wow. received messages from people in Pakistan and Nigeria oh, and, wow. <laughs> and they're just wow. like, oh my God, my aunties are exactly like this. And so, it's been yes. so joyful for me to be like, oh, so yes. I guess aunties all over the world are just like, you yes, they're just like that people. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. They're very meddlesome. They're very interfering. And you know, the best thing about yes. your book was that I found the characters very relatable in very relatable. I mean, I could just read about an aunt and I was, you know, thinking this aunt reminds me of the aunt I have in my family. So your yes. characters are very likable. They're very relatable. Mm hmm. Yeah, so, uh, so thank you so much for that. Uh, I have always, you know, dreamed of like, 
books, uh, you know, getting people to come together. And I just feel, I just felt that really strongly from all the messages. So that yes. means um, so much to me. Thank you so much, Jesse. Before I, you know, ask you to sign off, I'd like to take a look at your writing desk behind you. Is that a writing desk? I, I can see a bookshelf behind you. And I'd yeah, like your readers a, to see your bookshelf. My... <laughs> yeah, it's my bookshelf, actually. Um, it's got like okay. uh, books and then board it's a, games. <laughs> it's beautiful. I can see your yeah. books stacked over there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, amazing. It's it. beautiful, Jesse. It's really beautiful. And I must say, you are a beautiful person inside out. You know, I know you, you are so an incredible writer. But talking to you, you know, having a conversation with you made me realize that how you know, good of a person you are. I mean, it was a beautiful oh, experience. Wow, that's so nice of you. This was so enjoyable. Thank you so much. I hope, I really hope that you enjoyed this entire live session. It, this was my first time interviewing an international author. And I hope uh, none of my questions, you know, made you no, feel No, you were so awkward amazing. And... You made me feel very Thank at you. ease. And I feel like I'm just chatting with a friend. So that was so nice. Same here. I mean, I felt like I was chatting with an old friend and I'd yes. love to visit Jakarta sometime. And I hope oh you gosh, would invite me do. over coffee at your place. Yes, of course. <laughs> oh, yes, I would love that. <laughs> yes, and Jesse, this is an open invitation for you as well. Come to Pakistan mm -hmm. whenever you feel like and uh, my doors are always oh gosh, open for you. That is one of my dreams <laughs> is to visit Pakistan. <laughs> I love it. I hope you come here one day and you come here for a book signing. Liberty Books to definitely invite you here for a book signing session. Oh my gosh, I would love that. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Thank Jessie, you so much, for taking out time for us. Thank you so much for your presence, for your time. And it was a pleasure speaking to you, Jessie. Thank you. I loved it. <laughs> Good luck for your upcoming projects and keep writing beautiful stories. Thank you. You too. Take care. Thank you so much. You also take care. Have a good, have a great night. Take care. Bye. Bye.